Hello, David. Travis, hello. Hey, Bob. Alan, welcome. Stand by, guys. I uh, gotta grab something real quick. Welcome Chuck. Welcome Dave. Hey Dave, welcome back. Must be a Dr. Pepper time. <laughs> How'd you guess? That's funny. That's that's it's funny you guys know me that well. Ah, uh, get a little scruffy. Yes, uh, I've been working uh, in the shop around the clock. I fly out to. Indianapolis uh, Wednesday and um, drive to Chicago on Thursday for the veteran conference so I've been working around the clock out in the shop trying to get some projects done that I got to take with me uh, and uh, so no time for shaving no time for shaving yes Larry look forward to seeing you over there at the uh, um, Clinks for extravaganza for sure All right, so tonight, uh, or in the in the Facebook group, um, uh, I think it was Baron. Uh, Baron had uh, posted a post uh, showing some holiday rolling pins, uh, rolling pins for rolling out uh, decorative cookies and all for holidays and events and things. And with Halloween coming up and, and stuff like that, I, I thought this would be a neat project. Now this is going to be a fourth axis type project. Um, we're going to be working with the Vetrix rotary uh, system and for you guys and girls that don't have the 9.5 with the rotary don't worry you can still do this in your uh, Vetrix 8 or 8.5 you're just going to be using the wrapping gadget uh, the wrapping gadget um, in there and all uh, but this will be a fourth axis project and um, uh, it's going to be a combination of carving or if uh, you some of you guys have um, you also have the laser the digital laser uh, 6 watt digital laser uh, being able to laser etch and yes you can laser etch on the fourth axis now we're going to talk about that in just a moment and talk about some of the precautions and, and things uh, that you want to be aware of if you are going to use your laser with your fourth axis we'll talk about that in a minute um, let's let everybody kind of pile in here. I need a bigger shop with more carving machines. Yes, Chuck, I do. I need a bigger shop, period. I, I don't know about more carving machines, but a bigger shop for sure. Hey, Mike. Very nice. Very nice to meet you, Mike. All right, so I think uh, I think everyone's kind of piling in. So as I said, let's uh, let's switch over to uh, the Vetric software for a moment, and we'll let's see here. Put me down in the corner down here, and uh, we'll get over to our Vetric program. Now I am working in the Vetric uh, 9.5. Uh, but again, for you guys and girls that have uh, the Vetric 8 or 8.5, you haven't upgraded to 9 or even 9.5 yet, 
or anything like that you're still able to do this wrapped project uh, this fourth axis project you will just be using the wrapping gadget within the Vetrix software to create your wrap job uh, one of the uh, new features in version 9.5 of the Vetric is they have added a rotary uh, process for your job setup. Uh, you have a single sided job in version uh, 9, I believe it was version 9, uh, that uh, went with the double sided jobs we could do in version 9. And then in the uh, 9.5 we've got the new rotary edition uh, which allows us to do rotary jobs. Well. If you if you're in 9.5, you would you're going to set it up basically the way the same way I'm going to be showing you here. But if you're in the wrapping gadgets, uh, you're going to just be doing a wrap job setup, and basically your setup is going to be the same uh, as what we're going to set uh, talk about here in just a moment. Uh, you're just using the uh, the wrap job setup wizard in the gadgets from the gadgets uh, the venture gadgets. Now, this is a uh, a fourth axis project we are going to be making rolling pins but but it necessarily doesn't have to be a rolling pin uh, this could be a project that was carved uh, on the CNC on the flat table and you could make basically kind of a press so uh, with this we would be using the rolling pin to not only uh, you know ha have our dough rolled out if we were making cookies and stuff but then this rolling pin this pattern pin uh, we would roll over the rolled out dough and it would create this pattern whatever you know we're gonna do uh, different you know little patterns and stuff depending on the holidays or the occasion well if you have your dough rolled out and things uh, like that you can create small little pattern presses or blocks basically that you can press down into the cookies to shape the cookies and also put the pattern in so it necessarily doesn't have to be a fourth axis project so if you have the um, the mini carver or if you have uh, you know you don't have the fourth axis and things uh, pay attention to this class uh, still because of the fact that you can just instead of doing it on a wrap and on the fourth axis you can do it on a flat project and make a uh, you know just kind of like a little press block uh, for pressing out your cookies and your patterns and things like that so you know it's a it's kind of a, a, a dual setup in a sense and uh, if you have a fourth axis, you can do it both ways, right? You can do it as a wrap project or uh, as a flat project. Now, for our rotary setup here for our job, our spindle length, uh, I'm going to do a 12-inch roller, a 12-inch rolling pin, and then it's going to have two handles and all. Uh, and the diameter, now the diameter can be about uh, whatever you want it to be. Uh, I'm going to go with about a two and a quarter. Uh, this diameter here in the camera of this spindle I've got here is about two and three quarters uh, and I want it just a little bit smaller than this so I'm gonna go two and a quarter for the or two and an eighth I'm sorry two and an eighth for the diameter of the spindle now if you have a digital wood carvers fourth axis we do work off the cylinder axis uh, the center of the cylinder uh, for our Z zero position and we start on the bottom left corner of our project for the XY datum position and the digital wood carver revolves its Y axis around or along the X axis so you're going to uh, use the along X axis here uh, if you have things like the shark or the prawn or something that have a fourth axis uh, they have different orientations depending on how you mount it to the table uh, you could you could wrap along the Y or the X and things. We wrap along the X axis. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and this is going to set up my job. Now, this job uh, being set up here, it has created a couple of uh, layers for me. It's created a bounding box layer. Uh, it's created a zero plane layer and things uh, for me. And then, of course, my initial layer one. Now I'm going to turn the bounding box layer off. Uh, we don't want, we don't need that on right now. But uh, depending on what it is we're doing, if I was doing a two rail sweep, which I don't have that, this is that's the spire and all. Uh, we would have drive rails where we could create a pattern, uh, you know, a profile and stuff, and sweep it along. But we're going to basically be taking a flat uh, 2D or 3D object and wrapping it around our spindle 
and uh, welcome William good evening and Peter as well um, so what I wanted to do first and foremost is I wanted to grab a pattern and uh, I don't have any particular pattern in mind but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize Google Google's my best friend when searching for images and I'm going to type in uh, holiday cookie patterns holiday cookie patterns um, and I'm gonna click on the images and I'm gonna go over to the images and we have some patterns uh, that you'll see here uh, that we can use now most of these patterns depending on the pattern itself most of the patterns are uh, block patterns meaning that they can be stacked side by side or one on top of the other uh, depending on uh, you know it can be basically like a grid like a linear array a grid so that it's a continuous flowing pattern uh, basically what happens on the left edge uh, ends up on the right edge so on and so forth so you can put them side by side and, and, and run them in now depending on uh, what it is you're looking for and stuff uh, will determine you know what patterns come in now if I type in uh, instead of holiday cookie patterns what if I say what if I'm actually more specific Christmas cookie patterns and then I'll look for Halloween cookie patterns and all that stuff so with the Christmas cookie patterns we get more of a um, more of a flow you know a lot of different a lot of, a lot of different uh, pattern choices and things that that will get and stuff and so um, I like this one it's got it's got a little mitten got a Christmas tree got a gingerbread man got some uh, gingerbread house and all that stuff so I'm actually going to use this one uh, and uh, so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to save that image and I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and I'm gonna call this oh let's see here cookie patterns and I'll save that and let's see what else we have here um, let's see Halloween's coming up so let's see if we can find a how Halloween did I spell that right H A L L O W E E N Halloween cookie patterns um, let's see what we got here with this guy and I'm really looking at the pattern itself to see something I want something that's going to be impressionable and stuff uh, something that, that you know really sticks out I really don't want the shadows and all that stuff so let's uh, kind of bounce around uh, here's some with candy and pumpkins and pumpkins 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 um, and uh, let's see what we got here witches hats and bats and cats and stars all right I think I'm gonna go with this one here and I'll save that image all right that'll get us started and so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the image in for tracing I'm gonna bring the bitmap image in for tracing so under the file operations I'm gonna come into uh, import bitmap for tracing I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm gonna grab my cookie pattern folder I'm gonna start off with the Christmas cookie and I'm gonna zoom in uh, to that pattern now what I was referring to earlier is about as far as a, a stackable pattern is notice how uh, the right side how the uh, snowman ends here and then on the other side he begins well if I were to take this and you know pattern it up you would see how though you know when you you can stack them however big your your rolling pin is or whatever you can you can bring those together and they're continuous patterns so you can create that continuous you know pattern and everything that you want and we're gonna do that we're gonna do that after we trace the initial image so let's uh, let's zoom in here and let's open up our trace bitmap tool 
I'm going to use the black and white trace uh, option for this and I'm going to take my bitmap fading and I'm going to slide it over to the none so it so it so it does not uh, have any fading to it so I can see it's full color and I'm going to take my uh, threshold uh, colors and everything and I'm going to pull them up and I'm either going to pull them up to a, you know a, a certain point uh, until I'm happy with the uh, the pattern that I'm getting and stuff and so what I want to do is uh, I want to look and see what pattern is going to be best for me and that's gonna be good let's see what a 60 that's 63 let's see what 60 see I don't want to go here because that's gonna that's gonna take away all my detail I could do that you know and everything um, but that's gonna take away all my detail it's actually not bad there uh, you know um, I'll have divots with the three holes I just won't have that outline around the outer edge which may be fine um, let me look at this. If that's 79. Let's go back down here. I kind of like that white outline around the guys and girls, uh, you know, this outline and stuff around them. Um, but I've got to be mindful that there's. I'm gonna go right there uh, with that. I like that pattern because I, I want the ray, I want the divots and the raised areas and all. So that's what these outer borders around here. They're gonna give me kind of some raised up part of the cookies, and then the black areas are gonna be carved in. Whoa! I don't know what that was, but awesome. Um, it's uh, uh, gonna give me some different patterns and all. So. I'm gonna go with that and on this because I do have some of these little uh, pixels and things in the middle and stuff I'm gonna take my uh, noise filter and I'm gonna crank that up uh, to probably about 9 or 10 I'll go with 9 and I'm gonna go ahead and preview that and what that does for me is um, it, it ignores a lot of the uh, uh, inconsistencies in the image and I'll have uh, very little cleanup to do. There's gonna be some cleanup, but I'll have little cleanup to do. All right, so with that, I'm gonna call that um, good. I gotta do some cleanup, but I'm also going to take a moment. I'm gonna select this uh, tracing here, and I'm gonna move it to another layer. Uh, I'm gonna move it to a new layer, and this is gonna be called trace one. I'm just gonna call trace one. And um, I'm going to turn that layer off for a minute. And I'm going to do a Sega Trace. This time I'm going to go back to that 79 here. And I'm going to trace that as well. Uh, I'm going to click Apply and close that. Now I can come in and turn my bitmap layer off. And now I have two different types of patterns to choose from. Uh, focusing on this... Uh, gingerbread man here uh, so this uh, tracing will uh, give me just basically a cut out a little dimple of the uh, gingerbread man which I may want uh, or I'm going to have uh, you know some outlines and I'm gonna have a little bit of detail and things which I may or may not want uh, but on this I do have some cleanup to do. if I were cleaning this up that's node editing I would come in here and I would ungroup this image and I would go into my node editing and basically here I would delete this point and delete this point and I would bring this back around uh, to you know try to uh, clean that up a little bit we'll bump that out like that you know so I may have some cleanup and stuff to do and uh, for time's sake and stuff and all um, I probably won't want to whoops I probably won't want to uh, get into a lot of cleanup and stuff tonight but let's see here 
it looks like I have two tracings because I do bear with me a second some goofball did not make his layer active when he was cleaning up that was me so always make sure you are working in your active layer the layer that you want to work on and, and if you're if you're not when you make changes such as when I was node editing this uh, object here it threw this object onto my layer one uh, and uh, I, I you know I don't want that uh, to happen so you've got to make sure that your layer is active now as I come through my cleanup doesn't look as bad because I don't have two objects on top of each other and everything um, <clears throat> up here uh, this would basically be deleted out and then again on these uh, points here and stuff it's node editing guys uh, we you know we go through and I'm just going to start deleting uh, these nodes and these points and everything to get everything kind of uh, back into its shape get rid of this point and so I would go through and I would go through the process and and, and clean all of that up uh, if you know um, depending on how bad I want that pattern and stuff and there's you're gonna see that throughout because of that tracing and everything so let's do this let's go ahead and turn that layer off for a minute and let's focus on our uh, our good sheet here and let's get that centered in on our board now I'm gonna go ahead and get out of node editing mode I'm gonna go ahead and size this up and I'm gonna hold my shift key down to keep it centered I'm gonna size this up to the full range of my piece I may even overlap it a little bit probably don't need to overlap that much but that's fine now I'm gonna take this I'm gonna use my arrow keys and I'm gonna move it all the way over and I want to move over till I'm right on the edge of my board and you have to decide uh, here and now is if um, I'm gonna go up to the edge because I don't want any borders or anything on my rolling pin I want uh, so I'm gonna hold down my control key and I'm gonna sneak right up to that edge there and then I'm gonna while I'm in transform mode I'm gonna hold down my control and my alternate key and I'm gonna grab this middle node and I'm gonna pull this part over and now I'm gonna use the arrow keys on my keyboard and I'm gonna bump back to the left until I get some overlap like that okay and I'm looking at my circle at my overlap and let's see here uh, we'll go right about oh, too much I'm gonna hold down my control key and just bump over just a little bit make sure I got overlap everywhere I do not have overlap here so I'm gonna have to uh, it's important that we have overlap uh, for the trimming process so I'm gonna go ahead and bump over a little bit more till I get he's overlapped now my house has got some overlap alright so this is gonna be good now now that the pattern pretty much covers my entire um, rolling pin with some extra uh, left over I'm gonna take and uh, trim this end off but what I'm gonna do is uh, first all is I'm gonna do some trimming and get these two parts kind of or two pieces merged together basically and so I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup this one oh again working let's work in the layer that we're meant to work in here turn off that uh, trace layer get back in layer one alright there we go and I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup that I'm gonna ungroup this one so now I can work with these uh, parts individually and all and I want to see if I use the weld tool 
how the weld tool does for me for getting rid of these overlaps and stuff nicely see that now I do have a little bit of a jog right there so I'll just take a quick second and uh, I'm gonna delete that point let's spin that around a little bit I'm gonna come up here I'll delete this point and delete that point and kind of get that swirl going on um, so the weld tool was quick and simple for me to weld those two parts together so I'm going to do the same thing here uh, I'm going to select this piece this piece oh, holding down your get out of node editing mode uh, this part and this part <clears throat> and I'm going to go into weld weld those together um, these little jogs these are where my you know uh, things don't line up too well uh, so I'm going to go into node editing mode and just delete that point that's sticking out there delete that point sticking out there and I'm going to go ahead and delete that one as well get rid of that we don't need them so close together and uh, all right so that takes care of those two items let's come down to the Christmas tree and let's get out of node editing mode your escape key by the way gets you out of your tools as well all right so with this uh, I'm going to go ahead and weld nice cleanup uh, oh might as well if I'm gonna be anal about it be anal all the way let's get rid of that <clears throat> and all I'm doing is getting rid of these <clears throat> points and things all right now you don't uh, if the weld tool does not work for you if the weld tool doesn't work for you then we can go ahead and use our trim tool our interactive trim tool we can come over here and we can trim away our lines uh, to bring those two parts together and again I'm gonna go into my node editing I'm gonna grab the top of the gingerbread man here and I'm just going to delete that point I'm going to smooth that point and let's round his head off a little bit alright he's got a little bit of a knot in his head All right. So, last one is uh, the um, house, gingerbread house. So let's go into. I'm just going to weld this. I'm going to grab this, and you're only selecting the objects that are overlapping each other. Um, you're only selecting the objects that's overlapping each other. That way, when you weld, you're only welding the objects that are overlapping one another and with that I've got these two objects here let's weld that together and then of course I'll go into node editing mode and I'll delete this point because this is supposed to be like a little circle not a perfect circle because it's a cookie and uh, we'll delete that point there that point there and kind of you know straighten that out doesn't have to be perfect all right now I have one uh, continuous piece uh, both sheets have been now grouped to or, you know uh, brought together so I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna group it and I'm gonna open up my rectangle tool and I'm gonna draw a rectangle across the full uh, size of my work area and um, let me uh, Pull that up. All right, let's see if I'm on my line or off my line. It's important to be on your edge because we're actually going to use this as a border to trim to. So it's nice to, um, you know, make sure, you know, you're trimming to the right areas and all. We don't want any little gaps or anything like that. So 
See how I'm off a little to the left? That will end up uh, showing in the toolpath and stuff uh, when um, when I'm working. It'll end up uh, creating this little. I'll, I'll end up having this little line that I have to sand out, wondering where in the world it came from. And so we want to be right up on that edge. And let me go over here because I just. Uh, Let me find my midpoint right up here it is and I'll just pull him out to that edge all right so now that we have our border properly sized what we're going to do is we're going to select our pattern first always select what you want to trim first and then we're going to come back and select our border last that's going to be the boundary that's what you want to trim to um, and so I'm going to use the actual trim tool. Looks like a little uh, barber's pole, candy cane, whatever you want to call it. Excuse me, I have the hiccups. Um, <clears throat> and what I want to do is I want to clear everything outside of that boundary away. And what's going to happen is uh, it's going to, when I do that, it's going to clear out everything outside of that boundary and it's going to redraw all the vectors, uh, closing them off and everything. Uh, so now I have a pattern that is, uh, you know, full of my, for my roller pin. Now I can go through and I can look at some things and see if there's some things I want to get rid of and I don't necessarily need, like these two little guys here. I'm just going to delete him, select this one down here and delete that. I don't need that, uh, those little things in my cookies. Um, up here, I don't need this guy. I'll leave the line. That's a pretty good size piece. And I'm pretty well pretty well good uh, here so I've got my pattern now now because of the small detail this is what I was talking about with the laser guys because of the small detail I'm gonna be V carving this but I'm gonna be V carving it with a flat depth I don't want this going to a V because I don't want my cookies being all pointed and prismed at the top of the you know the cut when I when I roll this roller over the dough I, I don't want I don't want all these points, you know, from where the dough is getting pushed up into that. Uh, one, it's going to make it hard to clean the rolling pin. Uh, and two, it'll tear up my dough. Three, it'll give me all these little prisms and points and stuff uh, of the, in these patterns and all. And I want nice flat patterns uh, for the cookies and all. So we're going to use a flat depth. And so we'll have a V-card with a flat depth. Now, with the small detail, we got to you know be mindful of, of how we're going to what 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 we're going to be doing and, and, and how we're going to do it because um, there's some small areas here and uh, if i was doing an end mill maybe i wanted to do a flat depth or something i was going to use a little end mill to flatten these areas out uh, you know i would i i'd need like a 16th inch end mill unless i used a larger end mill and just let my v bit clean up where it can't fit either one but if I'm if this is just a, this is a pretty good size pattern here as far as the the little snowman and, and eggs and and everything uh, Christmas eggs well, I think that's an egg or it's a turtle shell one of the two um, but uh, but what if I what if my pattern was smaller and more intricate and things well I'm definitely gonna have to have a bit that's gonna be able to cut that uh, and also cut it deep enough to where it's gonna give me a, an impression that I can roll into the cookies or, or what have you so this is where I was talking about the laser uh, for for those of you that have the six watt laser and everything laser engraving the patterns uh, in uh, allows for uh, to get some really intricate designs going on uh, if you were to ever um, look at or, or type in uh, CNC carved rolling pins or um, holiday cookie rolling pins or anything like that and you really take a close look at them uh, you you'll be able to tell that some of them were CNC card but some but a majority of them were laser cut you know laser cut little uh, the patterns and all because they're more intricate and things it all depends on the size of your cookie cutters these guys uh, you know these these patterns and impressions and stuff um, and so I'm gonna V carve this with a V bit with a flat depth but if I were going to uh, laser engrave this, it would be a pocket cut uh, uh, for, with the laser. All right, so let's look at it both ways. Let's come over here and 
let's uh, look at it both ways. So I'm going to first of all, I'm going to select my pattern and unturn off. Make sure you turn off that border. Do not have it selected uh, when you're doing this unless you want everything reversed. Um, unless you want these guys raised in where they're pressed into the cookies type of thing. Uh, that, that doesn't make for a very good rolling pin uh, to be honest with you. So uh, you really wouldn't want the patterns raised up. So let's V-carve this. And I want a flat depth and I want a shallow flat depth. I don't want a deep flat depth. Just enough to make a nice pattern. So I'm just going to go a very simple sixteenth of an inch. Uh, I will be using a 60 degree, uh, the white side 1541 60 degree V-bit uh, for this. And um, I could just let my V-bit flatten everything out. And what that would end up doing is in some areas I'm going to have a little texture or tool marks and stuff, which means that texture would show up into my cookies. Uh, and that might be fine. If I wanted my cookies to be nice and flat and stuff, then I would use a small end mill, uh, such as a 16th inch end mill or something. And um, let me. And you can get a 16th inch end mill from uh, toolstoday.com and places like that. A mana makes a 16th inch end mill. Um, let's see here. All right, so I'm going to be uh, taking a sixteenth of an inch per pass. Uh, that way, this will get done in one pass. Uh, I'm going to be uh, running around 45 inches a minute with a 15 inch a minute plunge. And uh, let's apply that and click OK. Uh, I didn't have a sixteenth inch end mill in my tool database because I just downloaded this Vetric last week and I haven't updated everything. So I'll do a 60 degree V-bit with a sixteenth inch end mill. I'm going to calculate this let it process <clears throat> and when you're in the rotary view uh, it's automatically going to wrap the design uh, around the project and everything it's automatically going to wrap that uh, and all so uh, we can preview the selected tool pass or the visible tool pass actually uh, and let it uh, cut these out so my little 16th inch end mill is going in and uh, doing all the pocketing first. And then my V-bit is going to come back and do all the cleanup. Uh, give me my nice uh, detail and everything. There we go. And once it's done, uh, it will wrap back up into uh, the cylinder. And uh, one of the things I'm sure Vetric is going to... Um, work out the details on this uh, to um, fix the preview but the preview gets very pixelated uh, oops uh, the preview gets very pixelated uh, if you if you've got the the simulation quality too high and uh, you know we're used to working with a high simulation quality more pixels and all but that that wrapped uh, axis uh, you can see here how it's very pixelated um, and let's see if we can give it a chance to kind of build up come on now all right so now as I come in, let's see if it regenerates itself. There we go. So here's our little rolling pin. Now, this isn't the finish. This is just the body of the rolling pin. You know, we've still got to make the handles uh, and everything. And a, a good technique on this is uh, what we would end up doing is we're going to be working between our live center and our um, tell uh, you know our life center and our spur drive and stuff in most cases unless you have a chuck but by working off the life center our stock is going to have those center points and we're going to end up uh, drilling uh, some fairly deep holes 
uh, with that um, uh, on those center points and everything we're gonna be probably you know depending on what size carriage bolt I'm gonna you know you're gonna use a carriage bolt because our handle uh, that we make uh, it's gonna have a carriage bolt go through it and uh, the handle is gonna be able to turn on that carriage bolt uh, and then our carriage bolt is actually going to be epoxied inside of the rolling pin. So the bolt's going to be affixed permanently in that rolling pin. Uh, you know, it's going to thread in. You'll, you'll cut your own threads as you're, as you're, you're putting it in. But then, um, and, and you don't actually have to do that as well. You can make the hole where it's a slip hole too because you're going to be epoxying it in there. And uh, that way it's, that bolt is, that carriage bolt is affixed into uh, the rolling pin and then your handles are free to spin around so when you're rolling rolling back and forth back and forth uh, with that uh, rolling pin um, you know your handles aren't rolling with it they're stationary because you've got a good grip on them and just the rolling pin is spinning now some people like the uh, may not like that uh, they might want their handles permanently attached to their rolling pin so that way everything turns it's not free rolling free 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 spinning um, and so you know you would basically just uh, attach uh, your handles in a different manner and we're going to create a little design for the, uh, the the handles as well here in a moment um, but uh, so here's our and now if I wanted to get out of the wrap view just to look at my carving up here in my view tab in the new 9.5 we have this uh, we can toggle the wrapping visibility on or off. So if I toggle it off, we've got now we've got the basic, uh, you know, sheet so you can see the pattern in its entirety. And now this is V carving it, right? Well, what if I were to laser engrave it and things? Well, basically the same process, laser engrave, uh, except we're gonna we're gonna use a pocket toolpath. Uh, with the digital lasers guys the digital wood carver lasers your cut depth is zero always zero uh, but for this purpose um, we're going to I'm, so for preview purposes I'm gonna set it to a 0.02 uh, we're going to use the digital laser which of course uh, I'm in the new software so it's not in here yet so bear with me a second the digital laser is 0 .005. <clears throat> the RPMs uh, control the laser power, so we're going to go with a speed of 8. Uh, we're going to go 40 and 15 is fine. Alright, so we're going to click, we're going to change this name up here to digital laser and click apply all right so with my digital laser selected uh, we're going to calculate this toolpath and the reason why we're putting a 0.02 cut depth is if i do a zero cut depth then in the preview when we're previewing it we won't see anything uh, so uh, we're going to uh, put it at a 0.02 cut depth just so we can see uh, what all's uh, going on and then um what am i trying to say and then i'm going to go back and recalculate it with a zero start depth so let's go ahead and let's preview uh this uh, laser cut oh let's first of all it would help if we reset the preview okay I am going to increase my preview simulation quality because uh, I want a more accurate representation of what my cuts gonna look like and in too low of a quality we get all that pixelation now when you're working with your laser uh, what we're talking about laser and all 
uh, you can use the laser with the fourth axis, but you have to be very, very physically aware of what's going on because you're uh, when you're normally laser engraving on your table, you're shooting down and you're, you're shooting into a project board or a waste board or what have you. Well, when you turn that router and that laser 90 degrees, you are now shooting that beam out into the room. Um, and you, you do not want to fire up that laser and shoot the missus in the butt as she's over at the washing machine in the garage and everything <laughs> with her laser. Uh, it would be a bad day. Um, so... Uh, what I'm going to highly recommend is that you put some type of black reflection, uh, some type of black barrier, uh, whether it be a uh, uh, piece of uh, metal or plastic or, or a piece of wood, uh, surface black, uh, so it absorbs the beam. And um, you do not want anything reflective. You don't want to just put some aluminum sheeting up there and kind of you know set it behind your fourth axis and all and have reflected because then that's going to be worse that's then going to reflect that beam out in multiple directions and things uh you know in the opposite direction all you don't want that you want it to absorb that beam but you're going to be carving on the center of your cylinder so your beam should not ever go past the wood right but by the off chance that it does, you've got to have some type of stop behind your fourth axis so that beam doesn't shoot out across the room. Okay, you've got to, you've, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's got to be done. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's give this a little bit of a laser burn look here. And let's see if I can looking at my pattern here let's see what my step over is on that laser Let me recalculate that. I'm changing to a raster type pattern instead of an offset uh, style pattern. And uh, what I should achieve by that, what I should get is, cleaner detail. Now those yellow lines and things that you're seeing in there, those are just the pixels in the preview and all. And let's add some color to this now. There we go. All right. So that would be our laser engraving. So now how slow you go and how much power you've got going depends on how the deep the impression is going to be on the laser uh, or on the cutting, the um, rolling pin. Thank you. Uh, and, and everything. And you want, uh, you know, you want a semi deep uh, impression on there. So right now I've got, you know, I'm running at 40 inches a minute with a power of eight. Well, to get a nice deep carving and all, I would probably crank that up to a nine or 10 on the power, where it goes up to 10, the highest power. And I'd probably bring it down to about a 35 just to get some depth uh, out of the deal and all. Uh, and um, now you're only seeing a 20 thousandths of an inch depth here in the preview because that's what my cutting depth is that I calculated the toolpath out for the preview. Uh, but what you're going to do is what I would do is test your powers, your feeds, uh, feed rates and everything. It's a combination of both depending on how shallow or deep a, car, a laser engraving gets. But yeah, so you could do either way. And if you're working with small intricate patterns, uh, you know, if you do have the laser, it's a good way to go. If you have your, if you don't, uh, then uh, maybe think about like a 22 degree V-bit instead of the 60 degree V-bit, right? Uh, a 22 degree V bit to be able to get uh, you know uh, tighter in there in things. Uh, think about smaller end mills, eighth inch and sixteenth of an inch. And if you don't have those two end mills in your arsenal of tools, I highly recommend. I highly recommend that everybody at least at least at a minimum have an eighth inch end mill in their in their arsenal of tools for getting into those small areas and stuff. But if you can get your hands on the sixteenth inch end mill. Uh, 
trust me, you'll use it more often than not uh, in a lot of occasions when you've got to get into some really small, tight areas and all. All right, so any questions on um, pattern creating and where to get patterns and things like that? I just Google searched, um, you know, holiday cookie patterns. Found a cool little uh, design that I like. Now you could absolutely draw your own from scratch. We could create. We could create all of these from scratch. They're very simple to do. You do not have to do an image tracing or anything like that. You can make your own pattern. It could. You could have. Heck, you could have just Merry Christmas, Merry. You know, you could have text all the way across. So if you want to make Merry Christmas cookies, whatever the case may be, uh, you could do so. And. Um, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to recalculate uh, this for a zero, uh, zero cut depth, rename it to laser so I know that that is a laser pattern. All right. Now, let's see what our, let's turn off our toolpath. Let's take our uh, layer here and... I'm going to move this over to a new layer. Uh, I want to stay working in layer one. And this is going to be my uh, Christmas, Christ, Christmas, uh, Christmas roller. And I'm going to turn the visibility off to that and click OK. All right, let's go ahead and back in layer one. Let's take a look at. Uh, Halloween cookie. Let's see what we can do with this Halloween cookie and see, um, you know, what uh, what kind of detail and tracing we're going to get. All right, so not a whole lot of black in here. I love pictures that have black in uh, the outlines because uh, it makes the tracing so much easier. Uh, let's take a look if we convert this to a black and white and right off the get-go I can tell that this is not going to be a good pattern it's not going no matter what I do I'm not going to get the results that I want so I'm not even going to waste time with that we're going to and let's uh, get rid of this one we're going to take a hot minute and we're going to jump back in uh, to here and we're going to find a pattern that's more suitable let's see here this would be an absolute excellent example of laser cutting this would be an absolute good example of laser cutting let's see what else we got here uh, pattern background what I'm looking for in the images and stuff and it doesn't have to be a you know crazy pattern like I'm looking at here uh, it could be a consistent you know a, a consistent pattern and stuff but what my biggest thing is that I'm looking for <coughs> excuse me everybody what I'm looking for is I want to see some black around the outlines of the design. That's what that's what's going to get traced for me uh, in the design and things. And uh, you know it's important that uh, there's some you know black in the outlines and all around the outlines and stuff. Uh, let's see here. Two more seconds guys two more seconds and what I'm also looking for is something that can be stacked or tiled um, a pattern that can be stacked or tiled in case my rolling pin is too short too long to uh, you know oh Spider web cookies. Let's see, spider web cookies, and then every other cookie would get a, a spider on it. 
Let's see here if there's one with some more spiders. Some different webs. Alright, I'm liking this pattern and uh, what I'll probably end up doing is after the, the pattern is traced, uh, I'll end up throwing this, some more spiders around. Uh, but let's see, yeah, let's grab this. It's all about you know what you like, and again, you don't have to. I'm just I'm just showing you uh, some some different things, um, but you can draw your own designs. I mean, we could we could draw this very easily. Um, your spider webs and everything. If you want, I can show you that. All right, so. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's trace this one. Turn the fading off so you can see the fading. Now I want, um, I don't want all this noise, right? You don't want all that noise and everything. So we're going to back off till we get what we want. But I'd like, you know, if I go too far back, there's my hourglass. Um, I'd like to have that little hourglass in the back, a little uh, uh, hourglass. Uh, I forget what kind of spider that is, but I don't want to have to sit there and you know do too much crazy stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my webs to the consistency that I want them, right about there, and I'm going to trace, uh, turn my noise filter up quite a bit. Uh, and I'm going to trace uh, this image. And then I'm going to apply that image and lock it in. Now I'm going to come in uh, and I'm going to take my tracing and I'm going to put it on, I'm going to move it to a new layer and I'm going to just call this uh, Spider Web 1. And I'm going to turn off the visibility for that. And then I'm going to go back in and retrace this image. This time I'm backing it all the way out till I get those hourglass in there. I could very easily just have drawn those in if I wanted to. But I'm going to come back and trace this again uh, to get those hourglasses and all. And I'm going to apply that. And now I can come in and turn off my bitmap image. I can take my image and ungroup it and I'm going to grab just these hourglass guys right here. I'm going to move them to that spider web one layer and then I'm going to take this entire tracing and delete it. I just retraced it just for that layer. Uh, you know so I could get you know my entire design in there and you may have to do that from time to time with multiple uh, uh, what am I trying to say with multiple Im uh, with one image you may have to trace it multiple times just to achieve the uh, you know ideal results um, Dave Garbett good question sorry to interrupt thank you Troy uh, Dave yes this could be done with the 60 watt laser with the rotary attachment absolutely it's a rotary design uh, in a sense yes alright so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, this guy here and I'm going to now the cool thing about this what what's what's really neat about this why it's patternable is at the bottom of my rolling pin when this gets design gets wrapped around it's going to wrap around to here and so I'll have a whole spider in the middle. Uh, so um, those, those patterned uh, designs and everything. And so again I'm going to uh, just get right up. Here let's center this on my piece first. get right up on the edge not to on this one I'll stay close away because it's gonna carve in the webs 
in the webs and then I'm gonna hold down my control key and my alternate key the alternate key just keeps me in line with my axis uh, and so I can pull this to the side and depending on what I want to do here uh, and stuff I you know I would like I'm gonna end up centering this uh, design this whole design but I want an overlap similar to that and now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do some trimming so first of all I'm gonna ungroup the selected image I'm gonna select my other image and ungroup it as well and what I'm gonna do is what I should be able to do uh, is I should be able to just select all of these designs holding my shift key down and I should be able to weld without losing any detail on anything um, and it should welded all of those combinations uh, these two guys right here I'll weld them together that was taken care of so just by clicking that weld one time uh, all of my intersections were removed and all and I'm because I want the webs to look rough I'm gonna leave those intersections there now on this design I'm going to take it group it back together but I'm gonna center it now uh, I'm going to center it uh, on my board and everything and um, I'll have those spiders there, spiders here. I'm going to lose these guys. Do I want them anywhere? Uh, let's ungroup. Oops. I'm looking to see where all right so I'm gonna throw this spider here and what I want what I need to do is I need to uh, create a kind of little open area for him uh, and all so what I'm gonna do he's gonna end up being my boundary and all but before I do anything with him I'm gonna offset him outward I'm gonna offset him outward uh, I guess uh, about an eighth of an inch selecting the new okay and uh, eighth of an inch is too much let's go with a, let's cut that in half a sixteenth of an inch good enough all right now the reason why I'm doing this is I'm gonna use this uh, utilize this as my boundary and what I'm gonna do is on my spider web here uh, I'm going to select my web mostly just the overlapping parts of the web so this one here everything that uh, is touching the spider basically that one's not even All right, good. Now with those items selected, oh, I got a couple of things in here. I got this one here and this one here. All right, with those items selected, I'm gonna group them together as one item. 
That way I can so have them selected first. I can hold down my shift key and select this outer boundary of this spider. And now I can use my trim tool and clear everything inside of the boundary away. And what that does for me is uh, it redraws all the vectors and all around that boundary. And now I can come in and just delete the boundary. Um, and so now I've got a place for my spider to be. Right oh, right oh. Because imagine if the spider was sitting on the web, he would be his body and all would be hiding those areas underneath. Uh, you wouldn't see them, and so that's what we got. All right, so this guy here. This guy here. I kind of want him like yeah all right so one more time we're going to offset him outward a sixteenth of an inch selecting the new uh, we're going to come in and select all of the uh, parts uh, that are you know intersecting with that boundary hold down the shift key and come in and let's see there's two that one that one and that one all right group that together okay hold down the shift key select my boundary and trim the boundary is the outline of the spider that offset clearing inside of the boundary away so it clears that away and now I can get rid of that offset boundary and I've got a space for my little spider there okay now one last one I'm gonna take and mirror him this one I'm gonna mirror him to the other side And you'd probably want something a little more random than this spider web. I think it'd make a cool roller pin with those. So, um, all right, offset one more time. Outward, creating, uh, selecting the new. Um, we're going to come in and select all of the items or boundaries that are kind of running into that border, that boundary, should I say? Even this one way out here. This guy here. Okay. All right. Now, with those selected, you're going to group them together. Uh, with those grouped and selected first, you're going to hold down your shift key, grab your boundary last, and you're going to trim, clearing inside the boundary. And then you're going to come in and grab your boundary. If I can get a hold of them. all right all right now the last clearing that we're gonna do we're gonna come in here and draw a rectangle and we're gonna snap to the corner of our board and come over here and snap to this other edge as well and <clears throat> we're going to select all of our design except for our boundary make sure that's not in this selection we're going to group it all together hold down our shift key select that boundary last and we're going to trim one last time clearing everything outside of the boundary away uh, to get rid of that and to create our pattern now if we come in here um, we do our v carve or our laser engraving toolpath either one i'm going to do a v carve toolpath i'm going to still go a 16th of an inch i'm still going to use my 16th inch end mill where i can I'm going to calculate this toolpath, preview the visible toolpath, all right, and 
this I want the spiders raised up and then the hourglass cut in just like this here uh, but if you notice on these two side ones because of the boundary that was around them it reversed the toolpath meaning that those designs would be pressed into the the cookie and I'm not sure if that's what I want it's what I want I think I want it raised in so what I need to do with that is let's see what I need to do with that I need to undo my delete of my boundary let me just offset him one more time offset outward sixteenth of an inch I'm recreating that boundary around him I want to test this theory if I go back in here and I add that boundary into the toolpath if I calculate that toolpath he should be, if I reset the preview and preview the visible tool pass, okay, he's carved in like the rest of them. And so I need to do the same thing on this side. Let's grab oh Willie over here select our spider offset outward that sixteenth of an inch go back into our v-carve toolpath and add that offset into the toolpath and recalculate it need that boundary around those guys uh, for this all right any questions up to this point don't be shy guys and girls ask questions it doesn't even if it's not related to this project which it should be uh, because we're gonna move off of the patterns uh, oh I crashed the Mavetric. I crashed the Mavetric. Hold on a second. Don't you hate when that happens? This is why you save early and save often. Save early and save often. Okay? Save early and save often. Because for the simple fact, all that work that I just did is gone. Gone like the wind and um you know so i'd have to essentially start over well if i have to recreate it again let me know uh and i'll um i will uh to if you have a question on that particular spider pattern or something but let's go ahead and uh let's get into the roller pin handles now uh essentially the roller pin handles i'm going to make both handles out of one blank and um, the handles themselves, uh, I, you know, I'm kind of like balling my fist up to see, you know, about what would be a comfortable gripping size handle for me. And um, I'm going to say maybe one inch or one and a quarter, a one and a half inch diameter, somewhere around there. One and a quarter probably inch diameter uh, would be good. So... Uh, I'm going to come in and my diameter is going to be one point. Let me look at my tape measure here. One and a quarter. One point two five. <clears throat> Okay, 
Now, for this, I'm going to be using the molding toolpath. Uh, you may remember this one, this toolpath from uh, class the other night, Monday this past Monday. Uh, we used that a lot to, for making like the feet and, and, and the size of the box and all that stuff. Um, you know? So the first thing I need to do is I need to kind of draw out a profile for my handle. And so I always start with a rectangle uh, when, I, when I draw my profile. And so uh, the height of it's gonna be uh, similar to the diameter of my piece, uh, but it's gonna be half the diameter. So I'm gonna go with um, 1.25 divided by two equals 0.65 and how long do I want my handle so my fist all the way across uh, is about four inches so we were close with that so I'll go about four go about four and a quarter all right now, when you're making your profile, you do not use the bottom span uh, of the profile of the, uh, I always start with a rectangle, you, however you want to start your profile, you can, but you do not use the bottom span if you're starting with a rectangle, so we're going to go ahead and just delete that span, that line between two nodes. The line between two nodes is a span. Um, and uh, bear with me something, somebody had a really great question. Uh, Chuck, any tips on finishing or the type of wood to use? Um, no, I mean, if I was using it, I'd use a hard maple. If I was making it, I'd most likely make it out of a hard maple. Uh, and um, for the finish, I would use a like a butcher block uh, uh, salad bowl finish uh, on it, uh, which is food safe, food safe finish um, and everything. So... I wouldn't use like a mineral oil or anything like that, you know, where it stays kind of wet and all. I want like the, the butcher block finish uh, that will, you know, uh, dry to a film finish on it. Uh, and um, uh, so I would use like the salad bowl or, or, or butcher block finish on it, food safe finish. But uh, for me, I, you know, if I was making the roll of hens, they would be made out of hard maple, you know, something like that. Uh, or, I mean, they could be made out of anything, but it would be a hardwood versus a softwood. Uh, let's see here. William Edlin asks, does Patrick have an auto save function which would save every few minutes, which could be adjusted on how often to save? Now, William, I'm going to let you think about that for a moment because if I had an auto save function, I wouldn't have to recreate my design, would I? <laughs> no, uh, it does not have an auto save function. Um, if we go up into the edit and the options of the uh, software and everything, um, we have uh, you know a lot of different options, but there is no auto save option that we can uh, you know generally turn in, turn on or anything like that um, in our options. So um, unfortunately, there's no auto save. So it's a matter of uh, always, I save, uh, say save early, you know, when you create a project, save early and save often. Uh, so your first initial saving uh, would be, let's try that again with all the cap locks on this time. Same early, save often. Uh, but no, unfortunately, there is no auto uh, save. Okay, for the handle profile, um, I, I like uh, where it's going to come in. Imagine, let's 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 draw this out. Let's kind of like uh, illustrate this a little bit. So I'm going to have a uh, two and a quarter inch, I believe it was, uh, two and a quarter inch diameter. Um, I can't, I, I, why am I stumping on a roller pin? I'm going to have a two, <laughs> I'm going to have a two and a quarter inch roller pin, rolling pin, rolling pin. And, uh, you know, my handle is going to, you know, come up to that rolling pin. And so 
what I want is I'd like to have a nice little curve profile and things uh, here where it's uh, going to step into it. And this is only half the profile. So um, half the profile, there'll be two of them in there. But I want it to step down. So I'm going to go into node editing mode and right about here, I'm going to insert a point. And I'm going to take that point and I'm going to use my down arrow key. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to take and insert another point right after that. And I'm going to take that point, bring down a slight angle there. Let's zoom in here. So a nice little slight angle, a little ramp there, uh, call it. And then I'm going to turn this span here into a busy A curve. I'm going to pull this up. I'd like to, let's see if I can bring down a guideline and snap to one of these points here. That's a good arc um, there. Let's see here. Let's come. I don't want it too fat uh, up here because you remember it's going to be doubled. You know, like if I were to take this part and uh, create a mirror copy, uh, flip it vertically, not that way, uh, flip it bottom. You know, I don't want my handle being too fat. You know what I mean? Right, so we don't want it too fat, then it's going to be uncomfortable to hold on to and everything. So, um, let's, let's thin this up a little bit. Okay, and now if I were to uh, flip that, mirror that, just as you know, for visual purposes and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so that's what my rolling pin handle would look like. You know, when it's all said and done, uh, you know, a decent sized handle. I want to make sure that uh, the carriage bolt that I'm going to be using, that the head of that carriage bolt can recess in the end of this stock piece. Um, you know, when I have, when, when this gets made, uh, there's going to be a center hole uh, drilled through. And let's see here, let's get the size right. Bear with me a second. Uh, let's say it's gonna be a quarter 20 or three eighths, either one, whatever size carriage bolt uh, you want to use. And might as well get all fancy with it. Hold on a second here. Oops. Um, stand by. No editing. We're going to turn this into an arc. Pull that arc down a little bit. Um,
this guy would be much, not much bigger, but somewhat bigger. This one would be much smaller. That's a little square piece in the middle and all. And let's take all three of these. When that carriage bolt uh, goes in, that's going to drive me nuts. Hold on one second, guys. Uh, let's first of all, <clears throat> I'm going to join these two here. Uh, open vectors and make it one closed vector. I'm going to take this guy here and I'm going to center him. If I select that bolt, thread this bolt first and then this outside piece here, I'm going to line up and down, center him, and then I'm going to take this and center that, and then of course this, center that. All right. Now, my carriage bolt is going to end up recessing uh, into the handle. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm probably not going to have it like exposed. Uh, I'll probably have it kind of recessed into a pocket here, um, you know, kind of countersunk in or even completely recessed in uh, to that handle and everything. Uh, but that carriage bolt is going to come through and then in the rolling pin itself, uh, the hole is going to be most likely a little bit of a slip fit, a uh, pretty tight slip fit, so it kind of jams in there. But it's going to be epoxied into the rolling pin, but it's going to roll freely on uh you know this part here it's going to roll freely and there but uh that handle my carriage bolt uh, i'll have to measure a carriage bolt just to make sure this handle size and diameter and everything is good but i um believe that will be just fine all right so let's take the bolt out so I can get the handle apart. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So now with this, um, I need to split it back in half again. Uh, so I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to cut the vector here. I'm going to cut the vector here because when we are doing a molding tool path, you only need the top profile. Let's get rid of this spindle because this handle is going to end up being made out of here, but there's going to be two of them side by side. Uh, there's going to be two of them. And let's see what we've got here. Let's get rid of this guideline. All right, um, I want to sweep this profile along here. Not long ways, but along the width. So what I need to do is I need to draw a line, and I'm just going to line up, uh, making sure that my part here is in line. Right about there. I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to snap here to wake it up. I'm not going to click on it, but I'm going to wake that up uh, so I can come in here and draw a line here. And let's take this and create a mirrored copy. I'm moving these inward. I don't want them right at the end of my stock uh, and stuff. But you don't have to. All right. So with my two sweeps here, I'm going to come into the molding toolpath. I'm going to select 
uh, this uh, piece here, and I'm going to, or the, my drive rail, this piece. I'm going to select this line. It's my drive rail, uh, and I'm going to grab this profile. And right now I'm getting an error in my thickness. My thickness is exceeding my thickness. Remember, this is a one and a quarter inch part. And so I need to make sure that I did not exceed my 0.625. So let's look at the size of this. 0.625. So I didn't exceed my part. Well, let's reduce it down some. Let's just go 0.6. Six two. Same thing here. And let's see if that um, exceeds the part. There we go. All right. So that's the first one. We're going to use. I'm going to use a. Eighth inch bottlenose end mill for this would be fine. My quarter inch would actually be fine too. If I radiused this, uh, you know, I could um, get my quarter inch for a quicker run time. But I'll use my eighth inch uh, end mill for this or bottlenose end mill. And so this will be the uh, left handle. And then. Oh, notice, uh, notice in the view, my handle is backwards, right? So I carved it backwards, uh, which really doesn't matter, but I want them facing inward like that. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on this green node and I'm gonna reverse the direction of the profile. Reverse the direction of the profile, and I'm going to recalculate that. Um, there we go. Now, I'm going to come back over, and same thing. We're going to go with a molding tool path. Select my drive rail first, followed by drive rail first, followed by the profile. Notice how the direction is going this way. I want to now click on the green node here and reverse this direction so it comes this way and most likely I'll need to reverse the direction here as well so I'm coming from the uh, the handle so again uh, eighth inch ball nose end mill is fine for this and this is going to be the right handle Now, when I, if I were to preview these two tool paths and all, um, what do you think is going to happen? Well, if I preview these two tool paths here, uh, preview the visible tool paths, um, it's going to shape my handle. It's going to shape my handle, but it's going to leave these big old tenon, tenons and everything uh, at the ends and all that stuff that I could pretty much um, uh, kind of let the fourth axis kind of get rid of some of this. So what I want to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle here and kind of wake up to here. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to mirror that over to the other side. <clears throat> and then here in the middle, I'm going to uh, pretty much.
create a pocket here. And for these three parts, or these three uh, parts of my uh, tool bag and all, I'm going to do just a very simple pocket cut. Uh, I'll end up roughing this out instead of, you know, uh, um, doing a roughing cut instead of just my ball nose trying to, well, not really, I don't need a roughing cut on that. So I'll just pocket these out and I'll use two bits. So the cut depth on this, um, I'm, I want to end up with, when all said and done, probably about a, you know, a half inch or three quarter inch uh, tenon in the center of the board and all. And so uh, if I take my inch and a quarter full diameter, that's what it is, inch and a quarter, right? Uh, and I subtract uh, half of an inch, we are at uh, three quarters. And um, that's what I want, uh, three quarters. And then I need to divide that by two. So three eighths uh, and three eighths, because you're removing off of both sides, it's a rotary axis. So um, let's see here, I've got my inch and a quarter. If I take off three quarters of an inch, that's taken off and three eighths on one side, three eighths on the other, that'll leave me with my half inch 10. My cut depth is going to be three eighths of an inch because it's gonna be removing that three eighths of an inch on both sides. Uh, I'm gonna use my quarter inch end mill. We'll calculate that out. We'll preview those two tool paths. I do not want to do an offset cut. That would be ridiculous. So let's stop that for a moment. Um, I'm going to go back into this pocket tool path and that's going to be a raster. Uh, but I'm going to be rastering uh, along the Y axis because I'm, all I'm doing is taking these um, tens down. And so I'm going to raster around so it's just a revolving. So I'm going to go 90 degrees on the raster angle for this. Um, and you see how it's leaving that little skin over here on the uh, back end? I'm going to have these two rectangles here slightly, not move like that, uh, undo, make sure you select on it. I'm going to have them slightly overlap here. And here and we're going to recalculate that one more time the two open vectors that were being ignored uh, those were the um, those were the two drive rail lines that I accidentally had selected all right, guys, while this is uh, milling out, uh, any questions, ask them now. All right, let's uh, almost done. Let's see here. Um, it would be better to use a stainless steel bolt. Uh, yeah, Troy, that's fine, a stainless steel bolt, but it's going to be a carriage bolt with a round head. I mean, you can use a hex head bolt, but the carriage bolt will allow for it to spin a little bit easier uh, rather than getting caught on the uh, hexes and all. But um, yeah, either or. All right, so you see these little uh, skins of uh, at the seam here, uh, these little skins that are left over. Well, 
uh, one way to work around that is on these tenons and everything, if I hold my shift key down and grab this top middle box after double clicking and putting it into transform mode, if I pull these up just ever so slightly so they overlap uh, in that rotary as well, so they overlap one another, uh, that will end up uh, cleaning that area up. So it'll get rid of that lip that is leaving on that back side and everything. Give me a nice square cut. I won't have those rounded edges and everything. I've got a nice square cut on those. Uh, same thing within the middle and all that. But yeah, Troy, uh, yeah, definitely a stainless steel would be great. You know, it's, uh, that would make it uh, to where, you know, it's washer safe and everything uh, without, uh, you know, uh, corrosion or rusting or anything like that. And, um, you know, everything there. Uh, let's see here. What is up with this part right here? What is this piece? This is my handle. That gets chopped off, chopped off on the tin and all, but I've got this, this big chunk of thing here, right here. So let me see what we got going on. Ah, aha. This guy needs to be a little wider. That warning you're seeing is it telling me that it's uh, uh, ignoring the two open vectors that I keep selecting, the two open vectors of the drive rails. Uh, so that's what that pop-up warning is. Uh, that's um, uh, there. All right, so <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. let's see here. Um, William says, how big is the end of the drive center uh, and uh, tail holding the part in place? Well, both of them are one inch diameter. The, the spur drive and the live center have a one inch diameter. So on my left side, I probably should keep more than a half inch tenon, wouldn't you think, if, I'm, uh, if my spur drive is one inch? Um, but uh, to be honest with you, my stock is a little bit longer, um, you know, over here. Now, as far as the uh, half inch tenon on the tail end, that's fine. But the leading end, I probably, you know, if I were using, if my stock was going to be the same exact length of this piece here and not longer or shorter or anything, then this uh, uh, tin here would actually be, oops, um, this part here would actually be reduced down uh, to probably about like that. And um, leaving this leading end untouched uh, so that you know my spur drive has something to bite onto all right so let's see here um, your lines did not line up yes they my lines did not line up when well, that's why I was leaving that long big tin on the back side is that what you were referring to David I believe so uh, the right end is different than the left. Yes, thank you, Jeff. Man, you guys must have typed this earlier, um, or there must be a big delay. I'm just now getting your questions or your answers. Um, thanks, that's why I was asking. Yes. All right, good. Yeah, so the live center, um, it, you know, have, coming down to a half inch tin is fine for that because it come, it's a cone-shaped live center. Uh, but the spur drive on the front end uh, is a one inch diameter spur drive so I'd probably want to leave that end piece uh, untouched uh, so that uh, my spur drive has something to bite into and so therefore I would probably end up doing something like that 
like that. So that would be my roller pin handles. That's with the molding toolpath uh, to create the left and the right handle. And then the pocket toolpath was just milling down uh, this wood here, these tenons and all, so this wasn't so wieldy and stuff. Any questions on uh, creating, how you would create a set of handles for, you know, how you would shape your profile? And, and again, I like to just the very, this is a very standard plain round shape. Um, it is, uh, you know, uh, the most comfortable on the hand. You just want it to not be too fat and bulky for your hands. Uh, you know, uh, having to wrap around something fat just causes more fatigue. You want something nice where it's a nice, just a comfortable grip for you. And it may take a little bit of trial and error to get it to the, you know, the right size parts. And the great thing about it is, is if you make the handles the wrong size, then sell that, uh, you know, rolling pin to a friend or family member. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, so that would be your rolling pin handles. And let's uh, turn the uh, fourth axis off a little bit, and let's, or the rotary, and let's look at our actual parts here. So just a very simple curve. Um, nice little step up that's going to go into the uh, rolling pin. It'll come down to just a very nice slope. And then, of course, these tendons will get cut off. And on the lead tendon, this is what we were talking about on the lead tendon here, uh, leave that untouched so that, um, so that the spur drive has something to bite into on that end, on the, on the head end of the, the stock and everything. All right. <clears throat> okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's nine o'clock. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to, uh, that you're curious about seeing? Now, I want you to know something. Um, let's go back into another design. Your patterns, those cookie patterns, it doesn't have to be mittens and gingerbread men and cats and spiderwebs and all that. You could just have a very simple texture pattern that you would like to do. Uh, you might want to do like a little crosshatch pattern, diamond hatch or, or, or something, uh, you know, what have you. Um, you know, you just may have that uh, 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 just want to have that kind of some, some kind of texture or something on your on your part. Well, the let me make sure I'm at the right size here. I am. Uh, to create, you know, unique textures and all, you could use your texturing uh, pattern maker over here, your toolpath texturing pattern maker over here. Uh, you could use your profile uh, molding maker and things here as well. Um, and like if I... The, Either one, if I was using the texture patterns, uh, I would probably, they would probably run at a little bit of an angle, maybe about a 15 degree angle. Uh, I'd have about a maximum spacing of a half inch or more uh, between them, so 0.65 is fine. Uh, amplitude, I'd probably go about a half an inch, and the wavelength, depending on how you, what, what kind of pattern you want, uh, this is 12 inches overall, so if I do 3 inches, it'll be basically 3 sets of 4. So uh, we'll go with 3 inches. Turn the noise level off and um, place them on a new layer. And I'll just call this uh, texture. Okay. And if I were... All right, click OK to lock that in. Um, on this, I would probably use a very wide angle. Oops, 
Let's see, I did, what, what was my spacing? I think it was, uh, what was my spacing? It was 0.625. So, let's slide over that. On this, I would use a, either a large diameter bit or a wide angle V bit. Uh, it would be a profile cut because you're it's open lines. These are all open vectors. But if I were to do this, um, I would probably, uh, let's see, my cut depth, again, very small cut depth. I'd probably go about an uh, eighth of an inch with this one. Uh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch seems kind of deep for cookies. Um, but on this, I would probably use a very wide angle um, V-bit, or wide diameter, should I say, uh, or a wide angle, either 120 degree V-bit or um, uh, something. And yeah, not a wide, yeah, not a wide diameter, but mostly a wide angle. So let me create another V-bit. Bear with me a second. Uh, new V-bit. Uh, the diameter of the shank is going to be a, or the diameter of the head on that is going to be an inch and a quarter. And it's going to be a hundred and twenty degree. And uh, that V bit um, toolstoday.com or magnate.net, good place to get that kind of V bit. Apply. All right, I want to be on the line for this, and I want to calculate this tool path. And. Uh, Let's uh, turn the rotary off just for a second, and let's preview uh, this toolpath. Almost there. All right, so the eighth of an inch may be a little deep. Uh, the spacing is actually good because I did I did not want a V-shaped bottom. I wanted that nice um, flat top. Uh, but the depth. Kind of that's a deep, that's a big old cookie an eighth of an inch deep cookie um, for 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 the texture on top of a cookie so let's let's bring let's bring that down a little bit uh, 0.0625 just break that down a little bit let's let's uh, preview that one more time. And the reason why the preview is a little slow because uh, the uh, preview simulation quality, I can uh, speed it up if uh, it's too slow, but this gives me a chance to add, look at the questions you guys, you guys are asking. All right. Um, now the shallower cut, notice what the shallower cut's doing to me. The shallower cut is uh, giving me wider tops here, wider tops. So if I'm going to go with something you know shallow like that, then what I'm most likely going to do is reduce, reduce uh, the 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 sixteenth of an inch spacing. So let's let's bring that back a little bit. Let's get let's take these guys here. And let's keep the same parameters. Um, I want to go with a 15 degree, not 115 degree. Uh, but same parameters, but let's go uh, point 0.375, oop, too many decimal points. 3.75 spacing, everything else is going to be the same. Uh, the texture review. All right. All 
always, always, always click OK after you preview to lock it in. All right, one more time, let's calculate this toolpath. I'm going to turn down the preview simulation quality uh, so that uh, it'll be a little bit faster. Reset that preview and preview that selected toolpath. Sixteenth of an inch may still be a little bit shallow, but let's let's wrap her up. No, and let's change it to a different piece of wood so we can kind of actually see what it looks like. Let it uh, repixelate or regenerate. And so, depending on which way you want your lines, your textures, your pattern to go, uh, long story short with all this, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, concentric and all that stuff. Um, now, let's, other than using the vector textures, the last thing is, is what if I, what if I actually wanted uh, those vector textures but let's space this the space the lines out a little bit more um, I'm gonna go back to the point six two five uh, Nah, I'm going to draw my own curve. And now I'm going to create a profile. And this profile is, oops. This tool cannot be open and is only active by preview tool. We gotta close the preview toolpath. There we go. Alright. Alright, what this is what using the molding toolpath does for me is allows me to kind of freeform my, my design and stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is go into node editing mode and I'm going to come in here and uh, delete that span. I'm going to take this line here, I'm going to turn it to a Bezier curve. I'm going to pull this curve kind of tight. I'm going to insert a point here. I want what size is that? What size is that circle? Uh, let's see here, quarter inch. I'm gonna go 0.3 on the diameter, and I'm gonna take um, real quick. I'm gonna go into node editing mode. I'm gonna cut the vector on this bottom corner here, and I'm gonna cut the vector up here on this top corner. Um, cut the vector here. Because I want to be able to use this line here, this span, I want to be able to use it for a minute uh, with my follow vector along curve tool. This is, uh, you know, follow uh, object or copy object along a vector tool. So what I want to do is I want my object here to, you know, get copied along this curve here. Uh, I'd like to have probably a uh, overall two inch diameter. So I'm going to go half inch spacing. I might, there might be a certain number I want. Uh, but let's see here. 
That's, That's actually, actually pretty, pretty good. good. Let's, Let's go th three eights. Um, Let's go three eights point three seven five. Okay, get rid of my original here. Take my trim tool, my scissor tool and everything, and I wanna come in and I'm going to uh, trim that away. Somewhere along the line, my curve decided to go bye-bye. Find out where it went to. All right. We'll start up here. That way I can keep an eye on it. Trimming, trimming, trimming. Now I could, you know, instead of a circular pattern, this could have been a diamond pattern of sorts. Um, it could have been, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, this one I don't need. We'll get rid of that. This one over here, we'll get rid of that one. And now this is gonna be my drive rail. This is gonna be my profile, but I gotta make sure uh, that all of these objects are joined together as one open vector. I want that one open vector, this to be one open vector here. But I want uh, to sweep it along this profile. Well, I can't sweep it in this orientation. It's got to be laying flat, not vertical like you would think. Now, the only reason I drew it vertical was just to get my size you know, down. But now I've got to rotate this uh flat so i'm just going to use the number nine key on the keyboard and i'm going to click it twice because nine allows it to turn 45 and one more time is 90. and now i'm going to come in here and i need to make sure that my overall height you know with this texture that's coming in and everything i um i don't want to exceed the height of my uh diameter of my rolling pin. I don't want to exceed the thickness of my material and all that stuff. So let's look at our size here. And let's see. A 2.125 divided by 2. The radius of that is 106. Got to Do that again. 2.25 divided by 2 equals. Oh, you come on, you're killing me. 2.125 divided by 2. All right, 106.25. I could have done that in my head, but it's easier just <laughs> not. Um, okay. So if I take my molding tool path select my drive rail followed by my profile okay now it's going to you know sweep i've got some crossing lines here my arc might be a little bit too much but uh we'll find out but i can't have it in the middle it's not a center rail sweep it's an end rail sweep type thing um and uh, might have a little bit of an issue right here on, on those overlaps and stuff. So what I need to do before I do anything is I need to move this part down. So let's, uh, let's get him down. And I may need, I may need to make this arc here a little bit less dramatic so I don't get any overlaps 
All right, one more time. Let's try that again. Wonderful. All right, let's calculate this toolpath. And let's see what in the world Lainey just made. I have no idea what I just made, but we're about to find out. Um, whatever I just made is crazy. Um, I may not want the curve in here because I see that I'm going to have two blank spots right here. But let's see. Let's find out. Uh, preview uh, the select the toolpath. Crazy. All right, let's wrap this back up. All right, so that's the effect, that's the texture I want for the rolling pin, but that's definitely not the look. So what's got to give? Um, I think I need to be on a straight line. Uh, I don't, I don't think this one needs to be curved. I think I just need to be on a straight line here. So let me get rid of that, and let's straight line it from here to here and let's try that one more time let's see what we get I probably don't need this big dramatic curve here as well but let's find out uh, Reverse the direction. Reset that preview and let's see what we got. Okay, so I do not want the curve here either. Um, So here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. Delete this, start with a rectangle here. Um, go into node editing, I'm gonna delete this span. Come in here, I'm gonna turn this into just a very simple arc. Didn't need that, didn't need that wavy curve, but I do want a nice, subtle arc. Not too, not too crazy. I don't know, I probably don't even want the arc in there. Uh, bees are gonna go all the way around. Nope, I don't want the arc in there either. Um, all right, I'm going to take my 0.3 size circle, 0.3 diameter. Oh, that's close. I'm going to have it spaced apart three eighths of an inch. I'm going to get rid of these three here, get rid of these three here, get rid of my extra one right there. All right, one last time we're going to take my trim tool as quickly as possible. Let's see if I can get through this. Oh, just a few more, oops, a few more cuts. All 
All right. Take this, uh, hit nine on the keyboard twice, turn it sideways, drop it down, check on my height. Um, height's good, I'm underneath uh, what I need to be. So let's go into that sweat profile, select our drive rail, followed by our pattern here. Calculate the tool path. <laughs> Reset that preview. Preview the selected toolpath. Starting to look promising. There we go. And so I end up with a nice little uh, tenderizing uh, rolling pin, a little texturing rolling pin uh, where I get these nice little wave type textures in the top of my cookies. Uh, if I was tenderizing meat, uh, I could do this, but I could also do a crosshatch type pattern and everything, you know, for rolling pin. Uh, long story short, but anyway, so that's the pattern that I was going for. Um, and for you guys and girls that make uh, like Christmas little ornaments, little wooden ornaments and stuff, and little things to put in Christmas cards and all that and whatever, uh, this is a nice way to. Uh, you can do a design with almost like a like a star shape or, or a um, uh, where it comes to points and stuff uh, all the way around to make like these stars and all and then when you take this log or this uh, spindle off of your uh, fourth axis you can take it over your bandsaw and cut it into little uh, slices uh, to create these little ornaments that can you know ornaments that can be given away and all kinds of stuff neat neat stuff all right so guys we're going to wrap up here uh hopefully this gave you something to think about uh and hopefully you decided to make some rolling pins i'm going to make a set uh and i'll try to do a video on the handle part like the drilling of the holes the carriage bolt and the handle i'll try to do a video on that the actual physical assembly of all the parts uh that way it may help you guys uh if you have a hard time figuring that part out and stuff um but hopefully this was an interesting little topic or class for you. Gave you something to think about. Get you to play with your uh, fourth axis a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, do all kinds of things. All right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and... Uh, let's see. Which one do I want to end on that'll be good but uh, I would love to see you guys make some rolling pins and do something fun if you have a fourth axis if you have a laser think about your uh, patterns and all and again when you're Google searching your images and things uh, basically you you know Christmas cookie patterns holiday cookie patterns Cookie patterns, you know, those are your keyword searches and stuff uh, when you get those um, uh, patterns and things in and uh, have some fun with it. Definitely have some fun with it. And I've got to remake my Christmas cookie pattern because my file got shut down a little while ago and I lost it, remember? So, yeah. All right, everybody. I hope this was a fun class for you. I hope, well, at least informative, not necessarily fun. It might have been boring, whatever. I don't know. But uh, anytime you got topics like that, throw them out in the Facebook group. I'm going to keep an eye on the group and I'm going to try to, you know, come up with some classes based off of it. Uh, but be creative with your patterns and stuff. I'd love to see if you do make some rolling pins. Definitely post those images uh, and, um, uh, you know, definitely post those images and stuff and uh, have some fun with it. All right, everybody. Until next time. See you soon.